This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to talk to you today, as we're getting ready for Shavuos, about Maimed Har Sinai. Um, Rav Miller made the statement that the most memorable day of the year in history, the most momentous day, the most important day, was Maimed Har Sinai. That's why one of the Zechirais is we should never forget Yoim Asher Omanita Lifnei Hashem Alekecha Bechayrev. The day that we stood before you at Chorev. That's Sinai. Now it's interesting. We're told never to forget. And there are many people that never think about. It. Why is this such an important day? So, of course, you'll say, what do you mean why? We got the Torah. But it doesn't say that it says, don't forget the day you stood by Sinai. So you'll say, well, that's because we want to realize that the Torah came from God. It wasn't man made, it wasn't humanly written. And our Sinai is, teaches us that this is the divine word, it's not open to argument, it is the final say on everything, it is our go to place to know how to live, which makes sense. You know, if you want to know how to treat your car, so you could ask your friend, you could ask the mechanic, or you could read the manual which was written by the manufacturer. That's the best place to go. The manufacturer made the car, the manufacturer knows. Right? So Hashem is our manufacturer. Right? So he wrote the Torah, which is the manual for all of life. It's Takel Boraiso Boraalma. So that's where to go. That, that's true. Sinai does make it clear that the Torah is divine. Hasidim have a, a, a fine saying. They say that when you daven, you're talking to Hashem. When you learn Chumash, Hashem is talking to you. Or to put it a different way, there are, there are zillions of books in the world but the book that was written not on this world, right, is the Chumash. It's different than all other books. It, was, it wasn't written by anybody down here. It was written by Hashem. So that when you open up the Chumash, Hashem is talking to you. Okay, we know that. But there's a clue to what Har Sinai means to us in the Haggadah in a song that we all know very well. Ilu kervanu lahar sinai v'loi nasan lanu es ha-tayra dayenu. If you would have brought us to our sinai and not given us the tayra, it would be enough. Now that doesn't make any sense. It's like saying, if we would have came to school, but no teachers would have been there, it would have been enough. You know, if nobody shows up, then what am I coming to school for? That's ridiculous. That's what we say. Ilu, ilu, kervanu If we came to Arsinai and it was a rain, a rain, a rain out, it was rescheduled, so what do you mean, dayenu? It would have been enough. What does that mean? So there are those that answer, and there is great merit in this answer. There are those that answer that we know that when we arrived at our Sinai, it says, Vayichan Shom Yisrael. And everybody asks, why does it say Vayichan in the singular? We were 600,000 men between 20 and 60 millions of people, including millions of Erev Rav. So what do you mean that Vayichan Shom, in the singular, that he camped there? should say Vayachan Shom. It's a big grammatical question. So Rashi tells us, Ki ish echad belev echad. One of the few times in history at the foot of our Sinai, 
we accomplished actus. Unity. Oneness. And that is a tremendous success. For that it was worth coming to Arsina, just to accomplish unity. You know, when, when people have unity, then Hashem, some gazan, then Hashem doesn't do bad things to them. It says that Hashem did not destroy the Dor HaFlog of the generation of dispersion when they built a tower to rebel against Hashem because they had Achtas. When people get along with each other, it's a very great protection. So some say, Ilu Kervano Lefnei Asinai. Just to achieve Achtas, it would have been su- sufficient. Now that's a nice answer, but that's not the main answer. Something happened by Har Sinai besides receiving the Torah. Does anybody want to guess what that is? Is that like if they give the mushroom with the leather store when you walk into a leather store and you walk out smelling like leather? So like when we went to Har Sinai, even if we didn't actually receive the Torah, we still would have gained something. Feel yeah, but, but what? <laughs> something momentous. Transpired at that Sinai. What is what happened besides the giving of the Torah? We were introduced to Hashem. Hashem Akol, Hashem Akol. Did ever a nation hear the words of Hashem? Hashem appeared. Anoichi Hashem alikecha. Now, that's a very big thing. Let me explain to you how big it is. What was the, you know, when uh, when movies are made, some movies, they put in tens of millions of dollars on the backdrop of the set of the movie. Especially science fiction movies with things going on in the sky and spaceships exploding and all kinds of things. They spend millions of dollars on special effects. Lahavdil Elif Alfe Alofim. What were the special effects at Arsina? Okay, Choshech, darkness. Remember it was in the morning. Choshech, darkness, onon, clouds, arofel, blackness, afela, deep blackness, oshon, smoke. Now, knowing what you know about Tyra, how do how does the, how do we always describe Tyra? We always describe it as light. Vayara lekim es ha'or ki toiv. Es ha'or, says the Balatur Mez Begematria Bat Torah. It says, Chachmas odam toir ponav. The wisdom of a man causes his face to shine. Right? Kiner mitzvah v'toira ar. Don't you think that the backdrop of Torah should have been shining sun? Maybe the Shem should have taken out the aura of the six days of creation. Beautiful strobes of light. Maybe shining rainbows full of colors. Yes. But then, if it's all darkness and then Hashem comes through, then you even see the light of Hashem more. You see how much more brilliant it is. Okay, so you want to suggest that it was a backdrop to show contrast. Now, there is merit to that. There is merit to that. For example, everybody asks, why in the morning do we make a bracha of Shaloy Asani Goy? Why don't we say Sha Asani Yisrael? So some say that it's for contrast. So if I say Shasani Yisrael, I don't realize, but if I say Shaloya Sani Goy, 
and I think about the Arabs that are throwing themselves at a fence and bringing little children to the fence to die and not caring about their own families. And I say, thank you, Hashem, that I wasn't made that way. It's a very big thing. You know, I, my Chometz guy is married to his wife for 54 years. She came down with cancer. And he took her to Sloan Kettering. And I call him up three weeks later and I say, Tony, how is your wife? He said, Rabbi, she's dying. I said, Tony, did you start treatment? No, Rabbi, I'm here in the hospital four days already. It's no good. They're bringing her home to die. I call him up a few days later. I said, Tony, did she come home? No, they're not even sending her home. She's going to die in the hospital. Tony, did your boys see her? No, Rabbi, she didn't want them to see her this way. You're not going to have your boy see your wife before she dies? No, Rabbi. I call him up. She died last night. When's the funeral? When's the wake? We're cremating her tomorrow. Rabbi, excuse me, I'm eating dinner. This is a man that's married to her for 54 years. It's a different planet. So we make Shalaya Sani guy. We think of a guy and we see the contrast. That's, that's a, a very important thought. But it's not enough. Why is it not enough? Because it says that there was smoke. If it would have been black, so you want it to shine. But why smoke? Why thunder? Why scary? It was scary. It should have been the Torah is not scary. The Torah is Its ways are ways of sweetness and all its paths are paths of peace. That's not the backdrop for Torah. Remember, Hashem is introducing Torah to a people that said Nazav and Ishma. They said we will do and then we will listen. So they put themselves out. So you would think Hashem would say, let me reward you, let me show you what you're getting. And bang! I want you to know this question bothered me for a long time. And I looked around and I looked around for an early source and I finally found it. It wasn't easy. There's a Rishain on Chumash called the Taisvis Harash. The Taisus Arash asks, why wasn't the Torah given in the midst of sun and bright light and swirling kerubim? And he says, it should have been. But since we would sin with the golden calf, we lost it. Since I shall, one second. Since I know you're going to ask me right away, it says that Hashem only judges by Sherusham the way we are. That's what you're, it's bothering you, right? Well, Hashem only judges by Sherusham. He doesn't look in the future. But on a national level, He does. On an individual level, He doesn't. But on a national level, since He knew that our nation would mess up, we didn't merit. Now, this is a very important point. When it comes to Hatzlacha Satayra, when it comes to prospering in Tayra, some people, you know, they just never make it in Tayra. Even though they go to Shiurim and they apply themselves, they don't make it. Hashem fixed in in Tayra a rule. And this is besides what I said about national. It's a special rule in Tayra. If you want to have Hatzlacha in Torah, it has to be Haloimeid Almanas Lasses. It has to be learning in order to do. If you're learning it theoretically, you know, in, in Cambridge, in, in some of the biggest colleges, there were theology professors that had affairs with their female students and they were teaching theology 
because they were good teachers, but they didn't live by what they preached. That's not possible by Yiddishkeit. Gedoyle Talmud shat Talmud mevi'a l'day ma'isa. Great is learning because learning reads to action. Learning without action is almost worthless. Almost worthless. That's why Adam la'amal yulad la'amal stands for little main almanas l'lamit. So for example, here's a man he goes to a daf yaimi every night. Can't understand. It's his third cycle. And he's coming to learn the Masech. And he says he feels like he never learned it before. He says he doesn't understand. Other people are remembering the concepts. And he feels... He, 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 he doesn't understand it. He doesn't understand it. After the daf yaimi, he comes home. And he screams at his wife. And he treats her like trash. A person that's not putting their learning to action is not going to have Hatzlach and learning. That's one reason. But it's still not the main reason. I'm going to tell you now the main reason. I want you to listen very carefully. I believe this is something that you should have been taught throughout your formative years, but you weren't. Does anybody know what yesterday was on the Jewish calendar? There was a name to yesterday. Does anybody know? No, Rosh Chodesh was Monday. Today is also a name. Today is the Shosh Yes. Thursday? Yes. So, so what, was, what was Tuesday? Tuesday was Rosh Chodesh. No, yeah, correct. So what was Wednesday? Wednesday was Yom HaMiyuchas. That's what it's called. Yom HaMiyuchas. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a title for it. Now some say that it's a Yichas if you're in between Rosh Chodesh and the three days of Akbala, it's a Yichas to be in between. Others say that between Rosh Chodesh and the 12th of Sivan, Bays is the only normal day. It's the only normal day. And it's a yichas to be normal. That's what some people say. It's a cute word. It's a yichas to be normal. You know, I remember when my daughters were in Shaduchin, I called the, the famous Shatkin Shlomo Lewinstein in Lakewood. And I said, you know, Rabbi Shlomo, do you have somebody for my daughter? So he said, Rabbi Weiss, what are you looking for? So I said, I'm looking for normal. He said, normal? <laughs> I don't have normal. Normal is your car, I'm it. I don't have normal. But there's another reason why it's called Yom HaMiyuchas. It's called Yom HaMiyuchas because it says that on, on the day after Rosh Chodesh, we are told that Atem Tiyu Li Mamleches Kayanim the Goy Kadesh. You'll be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now, what does that mean, a kingdom of priests? We're not a kingdom of priests. Only one subsection of one Shevet are priests. Right? The 12 Shvatim, Shevet Levi has a subset. A group known as Kayanim. So, what do you mean? What does that mean? What does that mean we're going to be a kingdom of priests? The answer is, Kihain also means to minister to Hashem. We will all minister to Hashem. We're all ministers. We're all ministers. Like it says, B'nai David Kayanim. Now, David was Shevi Yud, they weren't Kayanim. But they ministered to Hashem. Now, here, here it comes. It says that Maishi Rabbeinu asked Hashem, what merit does this people deserve to get out of Egypt? So Hashem told him, by Tzi'acha Esa Ommi Mitzrayim, when I take this nation out of Mitzrayim, 
They will serve Hashem by the mountain. Ooh, wow. Kleichanim are people that are always aware that they're serving Hashem. Tomim tiyeh im Hashem alikecha. In all your ways, you should acknowledge him. That's what it means. In all your ways, you should know him. Now, that's a big, tall order to expect from people. So Hashem made it that all Jewish souls should stand by our Sinai and see Hashem. So much so that it says that we died. And Hashem had to revive us. And we had to beg Maish Rabbeinu that he should say only the first two luchas were said by Hashem. Oh, that because we died. And it was scary. Thunder and blackness and smoke. Why? Laman, the Torah tells us, Laman Tilmud, in order that you should learn, Liyira es Hashem alekecha, to fear Hashem your God, Levilti techeto, in order not to sin. At Har Sinai, Hashem implanted in the Jewish neshama Yiras Hashem. Now that's what life is all about. Shlomo Melech writes in Kehelis. Now Shlomo Melech had a thousand wives. If you have a thousand wives, you've experienced everything. Uh, Hashem gave us a Shlomo Melech, only one Shlomo Melech in the history of mankind. You know, he married a thousand wives and he died at 52. People don't realize that Shmuel Navi died at 52 and Shlomo died at 52. He had a thousand wives, he experienced everything. And one of the reasons he experienced everything is to tell us from experience. Soif Dover! Hakol Nishma! At the end of things, when everything is heard, as Elikim Yira, seek God. Ves mitzvahs of Shmar, and keep his mitzvahs, ki zekal Adam. Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest of all men in the history of mankind, says, Mo Hashem Elikecha Shoyel Me'imach, ki im liyira. What does Hashem ask from you but that you should fear it? Now where do we get this fear from? It's a part of us. And it's a part of us because our neshama stood by Sina and was frightened. It's in us. Just like there's knowledge subconsciously in us because the Malach thought it does in our mother's womb. We have a lot of subconscious knowledge. What does that mean, subconscious knowledge? It means that that's why it's easier for us to recover it. You try to explain some concepts to the guy and the guy doesn't know what you're talking about. Can't relate to it. All of you can relate to Torah concepts because you learned it already. That's why Ramea Shapiro had the guts to say that every Jew could learn Dafyan. Somebody would say, Rabbi Shapiro? Erevin? Yavamis? Zvachim? It's not for 
the regular person. That's what big Tamil a regular person learns. Jesus is at his brothers. No, but he said no. In a page a day, every Jew could learn Shas. Where did he get it from? I believe he got it from the fact that every Jew learned all the Torah in his mother's womb. So that means that everyone can recover it. Mayim Amukim Eitzah Deep waters are the counsel in the heart of man. V'ish Tavuna Yedlena. The man of understanding could draw it out. But to get back to our subject, there's a mitzvah say, a tremendous positive commandment that you could fulfill that probably you don't even know. But it's a very, very available mitzvah. The mitzvah is Es Hashem Alekecha Tira. You should fear Hashem, your God. Now, when do you fulfill that mitzvah? You're at home. It's Friday afternoon. And your mother says, I want to run out. Give the two kids a bath. And you want to say, Ma, it's not fear. I wanted to take a nap before Shabbos. I had a hard week. Don't dump it on me. And then you say to yourself, Hashem is watching me. And I shouldn't, I have a mitzvah of kibbutz of aim. So you say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to talk to my mother that way. Besides the mitzvah of kabed es avicha v'esimecha and ish ima iva aviv tiro, you just fulfilled the mitzvah of es Hashem alikecha tira. You're taking a test and this teacher had it in for you the whole year. And you didn't mean anything, but right in front of you, it's multiple choice, is a smart girl, and you see all the answers. All you have to do is copy it. Nobody would ever know. And but you say, but Hashem is watching. You fulfilled the mitzvah, say, the of Hashem Can you do the mitzvah while actually doing something? Like, for example, if the examples are from staining and doing something. Sure, you could do the, uh, the mitzvah while doing something. Here's a person that needs your help in studying. He needs your help in studying. But you had plans. You were going to go to the mall. But you say there's a mitzvah of a half to the reaction. There's a mitzvah of a hafta l'riacha kamaycha to love your fellow like yourself. If I was desperate, I sure would want somebody to learn with me. And then you say, and Hashem is watching. I'm going to do it because I realize Hashem is watching. That's es Hashem ali kechatir. That's seeing Hashem. It's a very big thing. And that's why Maimed Ar Sinai is the most important day in the history of mankind. Because that's what planted in us for all time, Yiras Hashem. Now, of course, life distracts us. Because we only see what's in front of us. That's why Shavuos and remembering Maimed Ar Sinai and remembering to think about Hashem. You know, when you'll get married under the chuppah, one of the brachas they're going to make is, Everything was created for His honor. What does that mean? Because everything in the world is supposed to remind us of Hashem. We see a sun that's 92 million miles away. And it's keeping us hot from 92 million miles away. That sun was not put in the wor- up there with a crane. There's no crane that could hold the sun. It would be burnt to crisp. There's no crane 92 million miles high. It's, 
and it didn't just accidentally pop there. It's perfectly calibrated. If it would be a little closer, we would be fried, sudden fried human beings. A little further, we would have an ice age. It's perfect, and it's perfect for all over the world. We're not squinting outside. It's perfect light. Lift your eyes and see who created these things. So, And you want to know how basic this is? It's the foundation of all wisdom. So besides the blintzes and the quiches and the cheesecake, let's have in mind this lesson, and have a wonderful Shavuos. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.